One of the areas of research of our teams at the Bird Center is measuring how quickly glaciers flow. Early on, researchers, when researchers first began studying glaciers, they'd go ahead and put stakes in the ground, come back at a later date, see how far those stakes had advanced, and understand how quickly the glacier was flowing. Today, in order to monitor glaciers in more remote regions of the world, places such as Greenland, sensors like this are deposited on the ice, there's a GPS transponder that identifies the location of the device, and it's location at various points in time is measured and then we can understand the speed at which it's moving. These also can be lowered out of helicopters in order to see uh, what places, inaccessible places, how quickly they're moving. Even with remote sensing platforms like satellites and airplanes taking photographs and comparing those photographs over time, it's still important to put devices like this on the ground in order for us to ground truth the data and make sure the imagery we're getting from space or from airplanes is telling us the complete story of what's happening on the ground. So one of the resources we use at the center to show students and older folks alike how glaciers flow is Flubber. Shout out to COSI, which is a science center located in Columbus, Ohio, for creating this recipe. It's foolproof and you only need household equipment, things typically found in your kitchen in order to make it. So the first thing you need is some measuring cups, measuring spoons, some Elmer's glue, you probably have a bottle sitting around from last school year that's a little smaller than this and borax, which can be found in the laundry section of any grocery store. We also recommend different uh, dyes to put in them. You can use food coloring, which can leave stains on hands and clothes, or you can just go ahead and use any washable ink that you have, washable watercolor ink that's sitting around. So the first thing you do is you take a cup of hot, three-fourths of a cup of warm water. You can warm this up in a microwave or a kettle. Be careful that it's not too warm so it doesn't scald you. And a cup of Elmer's glue, just pour that in. In a separate container, go ahead and mix two-thirds of a cup of cold water and a tablespoon of the borax. You can swirl that to mix it. If you want to add food coloring, the best time to do that is now. So the container you have the borax and cold water in, just go ahead and put a drop of food coloring. Today we're going to be making flubber that's white and a different batch that's blue and that'll be used to demonstrate uh, how glaciers flow together in valleys. Okay, once the borax is dissolved and the glue has been nicely mixed, all we have to do is go ahead and pour these two different materials together. So we're just gonna take the borax and cold water, pour it in with the glue and water, use our hand to go ahead and evenly mix these up. You'll see as soon as you put your fingers in that it'll feel Slimy to the touch, it's actually started to coagulate the glue. And so if you start to lift it up, you'll already notice I have a mass of material that's forming. So once you've gone ahead and made the flubber, one of the things you need to do is make sure you, you mix it correctly, you mix it properly for a few minutes, make sure everything's coagulated nicely. And then after that, go ahead and squeeze the extra water out so you have a fluid that flows pretty well. It's a non-Newtonian solid, so it's got some properties of a solid, some properties of a liquid. One of the benefits to this is we can show flow of glaciers, but we can speed up the process. So if I have a terrain model like this that shows some mountains that have features representative of glaciers, I can go ahead and establish some great glaciers at high points in this mountain, and we can watch the direction that the glaciers flow downhill. Glaciers are by definition rivers of ice, so they do flow under the force of gravity. But they flow so slowly that typically we can't see this process happen. So oftentimes scientists use video cameras or use sensors in order to show and rate, plot the rate at which a glacier is moving. So one of the great things you can do is run that same experiment I mentioned before that early glaciologists used to look at how glaciers move. They used to put large stakes in the ice, come back at a later date and see what the stakes look like. So if we go ahead and let this glacier of flubber run downhill, you'll notice that the speed tends to be greatest towards the center of the glacier, slowest towards the outside. You'll also notice that the stakes bend over, and that's because the surface of the glacier is flowing faster than the glacier is at lower depths. And so this is the same pattern that early glaciologists saw 
when they use, uh, put stakes in the ground in order to look and monitor glacier flow.